Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing from the shama'il of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as compiled by Imam Abu Isa Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala in the ninth chapter Babu ma jaa fi aishi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The chapter in regards to the to the life or to the living standards of the Prophet ﷺ, how he used to live, what were the standards of living of the Prophet ﷺ. Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala, he actually brings this chapter and titles of the same exact thing twice in this book, twice in Shama'il. Uh, first being at chapter number nine, Babu ma jaa fi aishi rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This particular chapter being very brief, very concise, uh, only having two narrations. Uh, then Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala, again, uh, chapter number 52, after the asma of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brings this chapter again, Babu ma jaa fi aishi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This particular chapter having nine narrations and being a little bit more detailed, being a little bit more in, in, in uh, explaining uh, in regards to the life or the standard of living of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how the companions actually observed that, how the companions actually reacted to that, etc. But nonetheless, inshallah, we'll get to chapter number 52 when we get to it, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. This ninth chapter, consisting of just two narrations, the first narration being, uh, Muhammad bin Sirin, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Kunna inda Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, wa alayhi thawbal wa mashaqani min kattan, wa tamakhata fi ahadihima faqala Abu Hurairah, bakh, bakh, ya tamakhatu Abu Hurairah fil kattan. Muhammad bin Sirin, rahimahullah ta'ala, he recounts the incident. He says that we were sitting with Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, and Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu at that particular time, uh, I've described the, the life a little bit of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, I think in the, in, in the first or second uh, uh, part of this particular series. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu is one of those individuals who stuck with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from amongst the Ashab al-Sufa, amongst those individuals who had dedicated every moment of their life to the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They were, so to say, uh, devoted uh, uh, students uh, everywhere they would just be around the Prophet observing, asking questions, learning from the Prophet learning from perhaps even other companions senior companions, that's what they had dedicated their life to uh, one of the instances which uh, I mentioned in, uh, towards the beginning um, I forget exactly which episode or which part of the uh, of, of the Shama'il um, this was in, but I'm sure uh, those who have been following along can uh, recall it, and those who haven't uh, can can uh, go back and, and revisit it. But Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, one day he's sitting outside, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passes by him, and he poses a question to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, with the intention that uh, he knew the answer, but with the intention that perhaps Abu Bakr radiallahu I'm walking with him, and walking towards his house, perhaps he will take me inside his house and offer me something to eat. That's how hungry he was. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu answers a question and he goes his way. Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu is left behind. Or Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu comes, same scenario. Poses a question to him, starts walking with him. Perhaps he'll take me, perhaps he'll offer me something. We get close to his house, I go, I'm left on my way. Or Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu goes his way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sees him. He says, let me try this again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets home. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks, do we have anything? A bowl of milk is given. A bowl of milk is presented. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, small bowl of milk. Go to the rest of the people staying in the masjid. The ashab al-suffa those who had dedicated their life. And they were all in the same condition, so to say, more or less, of, of, of Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu. When they were giving food, given food, they would eat the food, and otherwise they would go hungry. And that was the reality of it. Go and call them all. 
Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu calls him up and he's feeling a little bit, you know, it's just a bowl of milk. How are we all going to suffice? How are we are going all going to drink to our fill? Milk is such a thing, and obviously if it's pure and if it's not mixed with anything, that it not only fulfills quenches an individual's thirst, but it fulfills and satisfies an individual's hunger as well. Milk has two qualities. It can fulfill an individual's hunger, satisfy his hunger, and it can quench their thirst. Milk is, milk is unique in, in that quality. So Abu Hurairah is thinking to himself, you know, there's so many people, how am I? I'm forgetting the exact number. But how are we all going to partake and fulfill our hunger, satisfy our hunger, quench our thirst with this little bowl of milk? And he comes, he brings everyone else as a command of the Prophet. He has no other choice. He goes, he brings them all. Everyone, and not just that, but he's told to present this bowl of milk to everyone. And he's thinking to himself, obviously the individual who's presenting, he's going to be the last one to partake in it, if there's any bit left. So he presents it to one, two, three, he presents it to all of them, and they all drink to their satisfaction, and it's still not done. Then it's just him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left. He drinks, he drinks again, he drinks again, he drinks till he cannot drink anymore. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drinks, and then the bowl of milk is finished. This was of the barakah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala placed within that bowl of milk. But this was just one incident of the life of Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu. Rather, the reality of it was such as we'll understand from, as we'll understand from uh, the narrations in chapter number 52, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not live a luxurious life, so to say. He did not, by any means. There was no luxurious life. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never once complained to the people. Rather, it was such that these individuals who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is sacrificing everything for. You know, to such an extent that, uh, uh, you know, every moment of his, every moment of his is being devoted to the people, is being devoted to the people. And the same prophet who would have people outside his door calling out to him for various reasons at random times of the day, while he was even resting, to the extent that when he's in his house, when he's with the family, to an extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to reveal verses in, in Surah Al-Hujurat, Had they waited, had they been patient until the Prophet comes out towards them, لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ this would have been better for them. This would have been better for them had they waited, had they given the Prophet ﷺ, had they given him that, that space, had they given him that time. The Prophet ﷺ devoting all of his time to him. Never once, never once was it such that someone would come to the Prophet ﷺ and if he does not have food, he would arrange for the food for someone from someone else for this individual. We went over the chapter of whenever someone would ask the Prophet Sallallahu he would never return them empty handed to an extent that if he did not have anything and he had to give something, someone on a credit transaction, go to the marketplace, ask on behalf of me, get whatever you need and I will settle the account. I will settle the account, it'll be a credit transaction. I will settle the account, let the person know that I am going to I am going to take care of the bill. I'm going to take care of the bill. The Prophet ﷺ would either, someone is hungry, someone is a traveler, they need food, they want food. The Prophet ﷺ, if it's such that, you know, months are going by and the stove, the fire is now being lit in the house of the Prophet ﷺ, he sends Anas and Malik radiallahu anhu, individual comes, sends Anas and Malik radiallahu anhu to one of the houses, to a second house, to a third house, to a fourth house, the response comes back from every one of his houses that we have no food. We have no food. The Prophet ﷺ asked the companions, is there anyone who is going to host this guest tonight? One of the companions takes the opportunity and he says, I will host him, Ya Rasulullah. He goes to his house, tells his wife. The wife says, that, listen, we have no food. We have no food. The little food that we have, that was for the children. Me and you are going to go hungry asleep. We are going to go to sleep hungry. He says, listen, this is a golden opportunity. Let's lull the kids asleep. 
let's put them to sleep, let's play with them, let's put them to sleep. And once they're asleep, we'll present whatever food we have to this guest and we'll deal with our children tomorrow. They can go to sleep hungry for tonight. They can go to sleep hungry for tonight. They can miss a meal. They do exactly that. Not just that, they think to themselves that we are going to be sitting with a guest. At that time, perhaps hijab was not revealed. The commands of hijab were not revealed. We are going to be sitting, husband and wife, we're going to be sitting with the guest. So let's do this. We will act as if we are eating. We will be moving our mouth. We will be moving our hands. This little oil lamp that we have will knock it down. We'll extinguish it. As attempting to set it right, we'll, we'll, we'll extinguish it. This way it will be dark and the person will not be able to see that we are not eating and he can eat the little food that we have. If we all eat, we cannot eat to our fill. Let's make it such that at least he can eat to his fill. This was the, this was the reality of the companions. This was the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being such, you know, as كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran. The personality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in reality the Qur'an. Was in reality the Qur'an. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, يَحْسَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُ أَغْنِيَاءَ مِنَ التَّعَفُّرِ Because of his modesty, it never showed. He never showed that he was hungry. It never showed that he was in need as well. Never showed. In fact, only during the Battle of Ahzab, only during the Battle of Khandaq, this battle being called the Battle of Ahzab and the Battle of Khandaq, the, the Battle of Trench. Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam disclose his situation? When Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu lifted his shirt and showed that he had a stone tied to his stomach out of hunger, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only at that time disclosed that he was also in the same position. Rather, he was in a worse position because he had two stones tied and not just one. He had two stones tied and not just one. This is the implementation. The Prophet ﷺ being said, We feed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the implementation of that. We feed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No gratitude, no thanks, nothing is desired from you. The Prophet ﷺ was doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are doing it, the companions are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the reality of it. This was the reality of it. Every one of these individuals, many of these individuals, and the reality being that some of these companions were well off. They were well off. Rather, one instance uh, in Sahih Bukhari, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu is, uh, is a narrator of this, he says, خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم أو ليلة فإذا هو بأبي بكر وعمر رضي الله عنهما فقال ما أخرجكما من بيوتكما هذه الساعة قال الجوع يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال وأنا والذي نفسي بيده لأخرجني الذي أخرجكما قوموا He says that one day the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم left his house either during the day or during the night if it was during the day it was a time which typically people would spend in their houses. Uh, uh, the time bef immediately before Dhuhr, the time for Zawal, he at its, uh, is at its extreme, especially, especially in Medina, especially in Hijaz. He is at its extreme. Um, rather, even, even, even you know, this heat wave that we are experiencing, during the day, we, don't, we tell the kids not to play outside. Once the sun, once it gets a little cooler, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, after Asr, uh, before Maghrib, that's the time that we tell our children to play uh, because the heat subsides to an extent. Or it was late into the night. So a time where typically people are not outside. He sees Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum and he asks them, that, what are you guys doing outside at this time? And they say, Al-Jur, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Hunger caused us to come outside. Now imagine how hungry does an individual have to be that he cannot see comfort at night in his house or during a time where everyone is enjoying the, the, the family time. How hungry does a person have to be that he cannot enjoy that? Not just missing a meal or two. Missing meals for days upon days an individual has to be that hungry that he cannot sit still. He cannot enjoy at his house. 
and he is forced to come outside, not because he knows that he'll find food, but due to the fact that he has absolutely nothing else to do. He has absolutely nothing, no, no, other, no other avenue. Due to that, he is coming outside. The Prophet says, me as well, I am outside due to the same thing. I am outside due to the same thing. He says, Qumu, stand up, let's go. They go to a house of Ansar. This individual is not in his house. His wife is in the house. And she says, Marhaban wa ahlan, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, she says, uh, uh, the Prophet says, Aina Fulan, where's so and so? Where's your husband? She says, uh, uh, He went out to go get some cold water. As this conversation is taking place, this Ansar companion, he sees the Prophet Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu from a distance. And he says, Alhamdulillah, ma ahadun al yawma akrama adhiyafa minni. There is no one who has more noble guests than me. There is no one that has more noble opportunity to host more noble guests than I do today. Myself, I get to host in my house. I get to host the Prophet. I get to host Abu Bakr. I get to host Umar radiallahu anhu. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Abu Bakr and Umar. These three individuals, there is no one more lucky than me today. He comes, he sits the Prophet وسلم, and his companions, goes to his gardens, brings a bunch of type of dates. He comes and he brings all types of dates. Uh, uh, those who are frequent with dates know that the taste of the date changes depending upon how ripe or how unripe it is. You can eat a date when it's not ripe, when it's not, I don't know if you can use the word cooked in terms of fruits, uh, in terms of dates, but when it's not fully ripe, when it's still yellowish, when it's still greenish, you can eat the date then, then and it has a separate taste. Or you can wait for it to be a little bit more ripe, or you can wait for it to be fully ripe, or you can wait for it to be dry, and each condition of the date has a separate taste. Rather, not just that, so many different aqsam, so many different types of dates, each one having a separate type of taste. So this individual goes to his garden, and he brings a, a, bunch of, a bunch of dates, all different types of dates, all different types of dates. This is not something ordinary, this is something that shows that this individual was well off, so to say. And he presents the dates. They are partaking in the dates. They are drinking the water. And he grabs a knife. And he goes with the intention to slaughter one of his many animals. And the Prophet says, Listen, um, don't sacrifice an animal which gives milk meaning an animal which is very valuable to you, which you use for your house, um, which you depend on. You know, it's just us, so to say. It's just us. This is the Prophet being humble. It's just us. Um, any or ordinary thing would do. You know, don't, 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 no formalities, so to say. You know, as we say, no, no formalities. You know, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't go all out for us. Don't go all out for us. So he goes and he slaughters an animal. And imagine, this is the Prophet and his two companions who have not had anything to eat for several days. That don't slaughter anything which uh, you yourself need. And uh, the taste of the meat changes in depend dependent upon the age of the animal. Uh, I, I personally, I, I, I can't tell the difference. Rather, cow meat, uh, uh, goat meat, lamb meat, uh, <laughs> I, I, I cannot tell the difference. Um, but I've heard and I've been told that uh, the taste of the meat, I, I know the difference between chicken and meat, uh, alhamdulillah. Um, but <laughs> in terms of goat, lamb, sheep, uh, small cow, calf, uh, um, a, a full-size cow, a bull, a buffalo, um, the 
taste of the meat changes dependent upon the animal. So the Prophet says, you know, nothing, nothing fancy, nothing fancy. So he goes and he sacrifices the animal and he brings back, and he brings back, he prepares a meal, uh, presents this meal to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to his companions. They eat, they partake from it, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Waladi nafsi biyadihi, la tusalunna an hada naim yom al qiyama. Akhrajakum min buyutikum al jua, thumma lam tarjiu hatta asabakum hada naim." I take oath. You were forced out of your homes due to hunger, but you are not returning. You are not returning. Imagine they are eating meat after many, many days, many, many months. You can even say, Prophet looks at them and he says that I take oath. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ عَنْ هَذَا النَّعِيمِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامِ. You will be asked about this on the day of Qiyamah. You were forced out of your homes due to hunger. But you are not returning to your homes without experiencing these blessings. You better be grateful. You better be grateful. It is unfathomable to think that even at the lowest moments, an individual Rasulullah is reminding them of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reminding them that you will be asked about these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah lived a very, very simple life. Lived a very, very, very simple life. Continuing from the narration, he's Abu Hurairah and he goes on to say, I can still see myself falling down unconscious between the pulpit of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the apartment of Aisha radiallahu anha until someone would come along and place their foot on my neck assuming that I had gone insane, but I was not insane. It was nothing but hunger. The prescription or the, the, the way to cure this type of, uh, of, of, of uh, insanity would be to put something, the, the uh, individual's foot on the neck and massage the neck in that way. Perhaps the bottom of the foot being a little colder uh, to experience that coolness, this is what they would do and this would be uh, the, the proven cure at that time. He goes on to say, I was not insane. It was nothing but hunger. It was nothing but hunger. Malik bin Dinar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he goes on to say, مَا شَبِعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مِنْ خُبْزٍ قَطُّ وَلَحْمٍ إِلَّا عَلَى ضُفَفٍ The Prophet never ever filled his stomach with bread, nor with meat, except in the situation of that he is eating with people. He is invited somewhere. He is eating with people. He is invited somewhere, and they are forcing him to eat. If it was on his own, as the, as the sunnah of the Prophet being, that one-third for food, one-third for water, and one-third for breathing, so to say. One-third empty in order to be able to breathe, in order to be able to digest. We, unfortunately, fulfill our stomach to their capacity to such an extent that we cannot even move. We cannot even move. This was how the Prophet ﷺ lived. This was a standard of the Prophet ﷺ, an individual, whom, an individual who was the most noble of men, most noble of men. Individual who was the most uh, individual who, who Allah subhanahu who, who was a habib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, individual who was our prophet. This was a standard of his living. This does not mean that an individual, if an individual has better means, that he must uh, sell everything, he must live a very, very simple life. No, but the reality being that an individual should not let these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make and cause him forget about the reality of the hereafter, about the reality of the hereafter. Or if an individual does not have it, be optimistic and show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be optimistic and show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never feel entitled or uh, to, to the blessings that Allah has given you, that this is from my own state. I've done this. Uh, I deserve this. This is, this is a quality of, of, uh, of, of those who transgressed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the quality of Qarun. It's the quality of Fir'aun. These are their qualities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Jazakallahu khair. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.